Good morning. I'd like to welcome you to our worship service this morning. We're glad you're here on this beautiful fall Sunday morning. I'd like to just lift a few announcements up for you this morning. Uh, we, are let, we are doing a church, new church directory. The last one's about six years old, and some of you guys have grown up. And some of us, like me, got better looking. So um, we're going to do a new church directory, and we invite you to sign up for that. And so we'll be doing that on Tuesday and Wednesday, December 11th and 12th. So uh, please be part of our church directory. Um, also, the Joyce Meyer uh, Women's Conference live stream will be held at the Sioux Falls First United Methodist Church on Thursday, October 25th through the 27th. You can go at certain times. So you don't have to go all three days, but if you're interested in that, um, uh, let me know. Uh, the New Hope will have a host of pumpkin hunt on Saturday the 27th at 1030. And so if you have kids and like to go out there next Saturday at New Hope, it's off the plat there. Um, let's see what else we got. You always want to pass out the registration pads. You sure can and sign your name to that. And and uh, let's see, prayer chain. If you'd like to be part of the prayer chain, we most of you ladies are, but we'd like to invite you men too to be part of the prayer chain. You don't have to do nothing, but it's just to pray and to know what's going on, and, and we try to let you know who you pray for, and we just pray for them. That's all you have to do. You, you don't need to call nobody. So if you want to be part of that, there's three ways of doing it, by the phone or by email or by text. So uh, fill out that form there and give it to me and, and, or Maggie, and we'll make sure you're part of the prayer chains. I do want to thank all the ladies that helped out uh, with the fall festival, and there are some more items downstairs uh, for you. Um, if you like to, there's two tables. One's a trash and treasure a table, and you're welcome to take whatever you like there for a free will donation. There's a little bucket on the wall, a red bucket on the wall there. Uh, you can put your money in there. And then on the other side, the south side, are um, the food. We still got some food and candy left over, and you're welcome to go over there. And, and there is a basket there where you can put a free will donation there. So. And in the middle is all the Yes. Yes, that's my next. Michelle has some stuff there from Dakota Christian. Uh, that's not a uh, free will, but talk to Michelle on that, or, and but as well, and and the what? Rada. Rada. Yes. Um, Monica wanted me to remind you that if you want to put, uh, put orders in for soup dips or the Rada knives, the soup dips, soup or the dip or the Rada knives are from the Rada. Uh, make a catalog, so if you want to, she's going to put an order in this week, so if you'd like to place something that you didn't uh, get here, uh, she's willing to, to do that, so, okay? All right, are there any other announcements we want to lift up? But thank you for all those that helped out and decorated and got everything ready, so. All right. Let's take a moment to stand and greet each other in the Spirit of Christ this morning.
start to be team teams with somebody so we can kind of have a uh, kind of a youth uh, Sunday school group. Uh, it's going to be great because, you know, we want to lose uh, some people go to another church. So uh, put that in your hearts this morning and, and pray about it. If you are willing, come see me after church. So. Good morning. And I do hope you we all heed that message that he just gave us because it is something we, we need to address in this church. And uh, I hope you really do take it seriously because it is very important. <clears throat> Excuse me for my voice this morning. Um, if you'd like to take your bulletins for our call to worship this morning, print it in your bulletin. May those who love your salvation say continually, Great is the Lord. We are hard as glad in God because we trust in God's holy name. Let us make a joyful noise to God with songs and praise. We praise you, O God. We acknowledge you to be the Lord. Now if you'd open your hymnals to hymn number 89, Joyful, Joyful, We Adore Thee. majesty and might. Blow through this place like a mighty wind. Inspire us in your presence. Cover us with your love that we might be your people. Serving others with care and compassion. In Christ's name we pray. And all God's people said, Amen. You may be seated. This morning our first lesson comes from the book of Job. This morning we'll be reading from uh, chapter 38, verses 1 through 7, and then we'll go through 41, uh, 34 through 41. As you know, Job was a very faithful man to God and met many challenges. And uh, 
was challenged by Satan in many ways. And actually a man that lost everything that he had, but was later rewarded. But uh, here in, we pick up in chapter 38. <clears throat> we talk uh, when the Lord is talking to Job. Then the Lord answered Job from the whirlwind. Why are you using your ignorance to deny my providence? Now get ready to fight, for I am going to demand some answers from you, and you must reply. Where were you when I laid the foundations of the earth? Tell me if you know so much. Do you know how the dimensions were determined and how did they, were they surveyed? What supports the foundations and lay the cornerstone? As the morning stars sang together and all the angels shouted for joy. Now we move on to verse 34. Can you shout to the clouds and make it rain? Can you make lightning appear and cause it to strike as you direct it? Who gives intuition and instinct? Who is wise enough to number all the clouds? Who can tilt the water jars of heaven when everything is dust and clods? Can you stalk prey like a lioness? To satisfy their young's appetite as they lie in their dens or lie in wait in the jungle? Who provides for the ravens when they cry out to the God as they try to struggle up from their nest in hunger? This ends our first reading. Now if you'd like to open your hymnals to 826, it'd be Psalms 104 for a responsive reading. <clears throat> Bless the Lord, O my soul. O Lord my God, you are in grace. You are clothed with honor and majesty and cover yourself with light with a garment. You have stretched out the heavens like a tent and have laid the beams of your chambers on the waters. You make the clouds your chariot and ride on the wings of the wind. You make the wings of your messengers, a fire and flame your ministers. You set the earth on its foundations, so that it should never be shaken. You cover it with a deep as with a garment. The waters stood above the mountains. At your rebuke they fled. At the sound of your thunder they took flight. They rose up to the mountains, ran down to the valleys, to the place which you appointed for them. You set a bound which they should not pass, so that they might not be the earth. You make springs gush forth in the valleys, they flow between the hills. They give drink to every beast of the field, and by a wax their thirst. Above the springs the birds of the air have their nests, they sing among the branches. From your lofty places to the waters of the mountains, for the fruit of your work, the earth is satisfied. O Lord, how manifold are your words. In the wisdom you have made them all, the earth is full of your creatures. Yonder is the sea, great and wide. Creeping things in the universe are like that, the living things go great and great. There goes the ships. And the Le Levathian, whom formed to play in it. These all look to you to give them their food in due season. When you give to them, they gather it. When you open your hand, they are filled with good things. When you hide your face, they are dismayed. When you take away their breath, they die and return to the dust. When you send forth your spirit, they are created. And you renew the face of the ground. May the glory of the Lord endure forever. <clears throat> May the Lord rejoice in his works. Who looks on the earth and it trembles, who touches the mountains and they smoke. I will sing to the Lord as long as I live. I will sing praises to my God while I live. May my meditation be pleasing to the Lord in whom I rejoice. Let the sinners be consumed from the earth, and let the wicked be no more. Bless the Lord, O my soul. 
Praise the Lord. <clears throat> and now for our, our gospel lesson, uh, no, uh, we'll sing hymn 530. Are you able? Please stand. <coughs> standing this morning for a gospel lesson. <clears throat> this gospel lesson this morning comes from the book of Mark, chapter 10, verses 35 through 45. 
And in this particular lesson this morning, this is just when Jesus tells his disciples about his death, which is to come. And at this time, <clears throat> James and John are asking him to be seated at his right hand and his left hand as in his throne kingdom. <clears throat> so starting, starting with verse 35, Then James and John, the sons of Debedee, came over to spook <clears throat> to him in a low voice. Master, they said, we want you to do us a favor. What is it? he asked. We want to sit on, your, on the throne next to yours in the kingdom. They said, one at your right and the other at your left. But Jesus answered, you don't know what you're asking. You're able to drink from the bitter cup of sorrow I must drink from. Or be baptized with the baptism of suffering I must be baptized with. Oh yes, they said, we are. And Jesus said, you shall indeed drink from my cup and be baptized with, with me in my baptism. But I do not have the right to place you on the throne next to mine. Those appointments have already been made. When the other disciples discovered that James and John were at what they asked, they were very indignant. So Jesus called them to him and said, as you know, the kings of the great men of the earth lord over the other people. But among you, it is different. Whoever wants to be great among you must be your servant. And whoever wants to be greatest all of all must be the slave of all. For even I, the Messiah, am not here to be served, but to help others and give my life as a ransom for many others. This is the word of the Lord. Right. Right. Yeah, it kind of like stays a little bit. You know, because 
lot of times we like to be waited on. Don't you want to be waited on sometimes? We always want to be waited on. I do have to be waited on, but really Jesus wants us to help other people that need help. And that's what being a servant is, to help other people. You don't have to be their slaves, but just to help them out. And that's what Jesus is saying to the disciples. If you want to be in my kingdom, you have to serve other people. you got to help serve. It might be your enemies. You think I help people that you don't like? You know, sometimes we have to help people that we don't like to help. But that's what Jesus wants us to do. So the next time you think about when you make a wish, with a wish form, or maybe you wish about something, think about what would happen if that wish came true. Okay? All right. So when you pray for me, and you repeat after me, and the congregation, you repeat after me too. Dear Jesus, help us to mean it when we say, I wish I could be like Jesus. Amen. Will you pray with me? Oh Lord, help us to become masters of others. That we may be servants of others. Lord, open our hearts and our minds to see these people through our eyes and do what you have called us to do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now, maybe you were 14 years old, and you could wait till you were at least 16 so you, you can drive alone. Maybe you were thinking that you were 17 years old, and you couldn't wait until your 18th birthday so you could become a legal adult. Now, one of the characteristics of youth is wishing for the important millstone that seems so far in the future. And a lot of times we end up wishing away the most wonderful times are in our lives. When times are simple, we have few responsibilities and not a lot of pressure upon us. The inexperience comes with youth means that we miss the sufficient contentment, for we are constantly looking for better things in the future. Now, when I was young, I always would pretend that I was an adult, having, making my own decisions and doing what I want to do, and I love that kind of game. And then I realized when you get older, you do have to make some decisions on your own. It was so easier when I was younger and I could always ask mom or dad or, and sometimes I can ask Sue a few questions and she says, you have to make that decision. Now, although they were adults, we find James and John acting immaturely and comes to Jesus with a childish request. And maybe many of you remember going to your parents and asking them, a question and saying, I don't care what I ask you, Mom and Dad, I want you to say yes. Knowing that eventually you know it's, the answer is going to be no. But nevertheless, we see James and John go to Jesus and ask for places of honor on his left and right side. Now in Matthew's version, it shows us that the request comes from the mother of James and John, called Salome. And in fact, they think maybe she was the sister of Mary, 
So maybe she thought that her family relationship should give her son some kind of priority. But here today in Mark's text, it's, it's, it's of James and John asking that question. They are seeking recognition for their dedication and service of Jesus and his ministry. And they even go as far as they say they want to be in your glory, Jesus. Now Jesus knows that request is very outrageous. He says to them, you don't know what you're asking. And then he asks them, well, can you handle the great responsibility from drinking from the same cup that I drink to be baptized with the, with the baptism of which I am baptized? And of course, they think they could. They're up to the challenge. They're able to do that, they thought. And like children with imagination requests, we see that James and John truly believe that they're ready for the come with what comes with the right and the left in God's glory. And they even think about how good faithful followers, that they've been very faithful followers of the Messiah. And they deserve that honor. Now we hear that the other ten disciples get very angry with James and John's request. And so here we see Jesus makes a teaching assignment with them. He makes them sit down and Jesus explains to them the situation. And you see the point of this story. The point of the story is that James and John has no place, no idea how the honor of Jesus' Jesus's right hand and left hand are decided. And even the scripture said Jesus said it's not his decision to make, for they are already placed. They have been prepared. And then we see Jesus goes and tells them the kind a person that they would have to be in that glory. He says, whoever wishes to be great among you must be a servant. You must be a servant. And this is really, I believe, the attitude that James and John did not want to hear. They believe because they were faithful followers of Jesus that they deserved that place of honor. Actually, their behavior is, is, is just the opposite of whom Jesus considered to be great. You see, the behavior of these disciples is not a sign of mature faith. You see, they're claimed to do everything that Jesus does, but they really miss the point of Jesus' ministry. You see, servanthood is the key passage that Jesus makes. Tries to tells his disciples that every time he teaches them. And James and John had completely missed the point while they were with Jesus. Before they were even in running in the place of glory and honor next to Jesus, they, they need to realize that service rather than recognition, should be their goal. You see, an ignorant person is someone that sees him better than other people. Uh, Himself better than others, while the person with the humble heart sees others better than herself. And you see, James and John had to learn that lesson of humility. And that exercise, Jesus would teach them through his death and through his resurrection. You see, humility is often inflected through defeat, but is exceptional when it is followed by the great triumph. To understand more of this, there's a story back in 1994, 
Thurman Thomas had his head bowed with his head covering his face as he sat on the bench of the Buffalo team that lost their fourth straight Super Bowl. And he fumbled three, he, his three fumbles helped seal the awful fate to his Buffalo Bills. And he felt terrible about it. But suddenly, standing right before him was Dallas Cowboy star running back Emmett Smith, who was just named the most valuable of Super Bowl 28. And Smith was carrying his small goddaughter. And he said to her, I want you to meet the greatest running back in the NFL, Mr. Thurman Thomas. Now in searching for a place of honor in times to come, we see that James and John miss that opportunity with that with Jesus is present with them. Their inexperienced faith blinds them to the sufficient of the time at hand. Instead of wishing away their time with Jesus. Folks, let's don't fall in the same trap as James and John did. Wishing for all of that. Our goal is to go out and make disciples. Our goal is to be servants to others. So what is God calling you to do? Let's pray. Gracious God, guide us in your service. Lead us to paths of humility and compassion. Lord, help us to remember that true greatness is nothing less than love and nothing more than servanthood. But in the name of our Master who serves us the best, we pray this through Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Today is Laity Sunday and the third Sunday of October, and I am grateful for all the laity of, of this church and the churches I have served in the past. And please join me, uh, should be on your screen or in your insert this morning, the Lit Litany of Laity Sunday. Please join me, in the, you can re respond in the bold print, please. From the beginning, God entered into a covenant with the human family, with Adam and Eve, Noah, Abraham and Sarah, Moses, Deborah, Ruth, and Jeremiah. As is in Jesus Christ calls us into the covenant and making us ministers of Christ's righteousness. In Christ's minist Christian ministry is Christ's work of outreaching love. It demonstrates a common life of gratitude and devotion, witness and service, celebration and discipleship. All Christians are called to Christ's servanthood in the world, to the glory of God and for human fulfillment. The Church, as the community of a new covenant, participates in Christ's ministry of grace. It stretches out the human need, whatever service may convey God's love and ours. In our ministry of servanthood is the ultimate concern that all may renew the image of their Creator, and all the Christians call to minister in deeds and words that heal and free. Amen. And you may remain seated as we sing our hymn of response, We Are the Church. Number 558.
should be on your screen or in your hymn note 887 the affirmation from Romans would you please stand if you're able please who shall separate us from the love of Christ shall prosper tribulation or distress or prosecution or famine nor nakedness nor pearl nor sword no in all things we are more than conquerors through the one who loved us. And we are sure that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God. In Christ Jesus our Lord, thanks be to God. Amen. Concerns this morning we'd like to lift up? Okay. Glenn Huggins, okay. He's in the hospital. Okay. Keep Glenn in our prayers. Okay. All right. Yes, Darcy. Josh Bruner, you said? Yes. Oh, Richard, want to lift up Richard in our prayers as well, because he'll be having surgery in, in Mayo this week on Friday, so we want to keep Richard in our prayers as well. So, okay. Any other joy? We're going to have our uh, gentlemen friends from Kentucky all the way here, so glad to see you again. All right. So, any other? And we'll about the show teams with us as well. All right. And one more, yes, Warren's family here, yes. Glad to have you guys here worshiping. That's great. All right. Make sure I don't miss anybody. So, all right. It's good to have you all, have you all worshiping with us today. So, so let's go with God in prayer then, okay? Oh God, you have turned our understanding to the world upside down. 
and by the proclamation of the gospel. We often think that real power resides in wealth or influence or strength of command. And yet in your holy word, you remind us that those who wield real power are those who go and serve others. And give us the will to be servants of others and for the sake of Jesus Christ. And let us swallow our pride that has become a stumbling block to many of us. And let us have the mind of Christ who emptied himself for the sake of others. Give us the strength to humble ourselves and to follow the example of Jesus, who always puts other needs ahead of his own. And unite us as a people who understand that true discipleship is in love with one another and as Christ hath first loved us. Lord, give us the courage to be your people in Jesus' name. And gracious God, we are just grateful for this day you have provided for us. We're grateful for friends, we're grateful for families. And again, we're grateful that we can come and sing our praises to you to come and hear your word and to go out and share that word with others. And Lord, we want to lift up all of those that are shared here, joys and concerns. We lift, lift up especially all the, farm, or the farmers and especially all those that are here hunting that they may have a safe hunt and guide them. And also, Lord, we want to lift up those that need our prayers, especially Eleanor's brother, Glenn Huggins, who's in the hospital. And Josh Bruner. And also lift up Kenny Porter. He's, he's, his health is given away. And Lord, we just want to lift him up as well. And lift up, oh God, Rich Gregor, as he'll be having surgery in Mayo this week. And again, Lord, be with all the nurses and all the doctors. And be with all these families. Surround them with your love during this time of, of illness. And Lord, we also lift up others on our prayer list. Lift up Betty King's sister, Mary. Kathy Pepper's sister, Sheila Baker. And Neil Raisby. Lord, we also lift up the family of Harlan Heiso, who passed away last week. And be with them during this time of grieving. And Lord, we also lift up the leaders of our church, the leaders of our city here in, in Geddes, in our state, as well as our country. I'm grateful, oh God, just to have in you in our lives. Lift up the concerns that people may be brought here this morning, and knowing you do hear our prayer. And Lord, now we lift all this up to you as we join in the prayer you taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. And let us now confess our sins to God and to one another. Please join me in our prayer confession on the screen or in your bulletin this morning. Let us pray. Holy and awesome God, we stand in your presence filled with regret for our many sins and failings, though there is greatness in us and a deep longing for goodness, we have often denied our better selves and refused to hear your voice calling us 
to rise to the full height of our humanity. For there is weakness in us as well as strength. At times we choose to walk in darkness, our visions obscure. We do not care to look within, and we are unwilling to look beyond at those who need our help. O oh God, we are too weak to walk unaided. Be with us as a strong and wise friend, and teach us to walk in the light of your truth. Amen. And let's make time of silence and confess our own sins to God. For the Lord is merciful and gracious, endlessly patient, loving, and true. Show mercies to thousands, forgiven iniquity, transgressions, and sins, and granting us pardon. May these words be our words of assurance today. I'd like to invite the ushers to come forward as now we give our tithes and offerings. God of glory, we just thank you for the seasons of abundance. We praise you for the gifts of this earth and for our lives. As we return a portion of these gifts, we also dedicate our lives to your service. Bless our gifts and our service that we may glorify you and reflect your love in all that we say and in all that we do. Amen.
invite you to fellowship downstairs. We've got plenty of food. And then also remind you of our trash and treasures stuff downstairs. We've got plenty of other goodies for a goodwill donation left over from our fall festival. You're welcome to come down and make a, just make a donation for what you'd like to take. So, Receive now our Lord's benediction. Go forth with care and compassion. Go forth to serve and to love. Go forth as children of God. And all of God's people said, Amen. Peace.